Hello. Let me share with you this article by Delilah Labajo. Um, she is an instructor. She was an instructor at the Department of History of San Carlos Sulu. And she wrote this paper, The Peopling of the Danahon of Class. What do you mean by the peopling? That's the arrival of the people in a certain place. Okay. The Lahan Reef Bank is involved. So let me present this paper to you as an example of good ethno historical writing. In short, um, an article, research article that presents the results of ethno historical research, ethno history. So let me start. First, good ethno history is simple when it is honest. So look at this work by the Bahamas. Labaho names the question. She shows how she gathered evidence, her method. She quotes local voices. She checks newspapers and reports. Um, she also admits what the study can and cannot settle. She does not pretend to be decisive when her evidence is not yet decisive. Okay. So, Allow me to pull out some lines from this paper to foreground and present to you some rules, simple rules when writing at least. This will aid you when writing your terminal project. Labajo writes the aim very clearly. Okay. Here, in the very first page, Labajo writes that the project aims to do what? It was to both determine what socioeconomic factors accounted for the history of this migration, so the migration of people into the Renahon Leaf and Gold. The sentence tells readers upfront, right from the very start, exactly what the study set out to explain. An explicit question keeps field work focused. You're focused on what you're trying to investigate. It decides which people you interview, which documents you chase, and which comparisons matter. Another rule is that you must say your methods very plainly. It should be easy to understand. Okay. In that same page, the same sentence, Lebaho stated that he used quote, Oral history. Oral history interviews combined with newspaper and literature search. Put methods like this in one short line so readers immediately know the evidence base. If you mix interviews and archives, say both. If you use maps, say so. Do not bury the method in long paragraphs. Okay, It must be straightforward. Next rule is that you must show who you talk to and why. Okay. Labaho reports that um, here. Labaho reports that the elderly, the elderly inhabitants of three islands, were selected for uh, oral history interviews. It's very straightforward. He listed the islands: Ingotanan Island, Kalituban Island, and Fadalon Island. Right. Tingutalan uh, Island belongs to Bien Unido. Talituban Island belongs to Talibon. Uh, Bandanon Island belongs to Hetafe. Okay. So it's very straightforward. You know, you know who the people are that she, that she based her findings from. Good 
as my history, the names of people, the places, and of course, the reason. The reason for choosing them. Readers should be able to judge whether the informants were likely to remember the events studied or whether the memories represent a particular social group. This can be good results why the, these specific people are chosen. Now, another rule. Ground stories in landscape and resources. Labaho notes that the reef is, quote, one of only six double barrier reef systems in the world. End quote. Facts like this turn human stories into plausible accounts. If the reef once offered extraordinary fish, migration to those islands makes sense, right? makes economic sense, because you go where the food is. But that's from facts like ecology, distance to markets, or settlement patterns. These upper memories to real constraints and to real life opportunities. Now, let informants speak. Okay? Let informants speak. Also, this is the next rule. Let the informants speak. Then explain life. Uh, um, for example, Labaho includes uh, the line. Sa una, ang isda maoy mangita sa tao. Karon balina. He then, uh, she then translated that um, line as follows. Before the fish look for the people to catch them. No, it's the other way around. Small calls like this do work that raw data cannot. They show how they show shared experience and register local meaning. After voting, because your audience is international. Translate, translate what has been said, and then say plainly what the code shows. For example, declining fish stocks, social change, loss of anything. Then uh, then the next rule is that you must triangulate evidence. What do you mean triangulate? That um, rely on only one information source. Okay, refer to more than one, two, three, four. Okay, um, evidences or basis for making a claim. Okay, finding. Labaho repeatedly, repeatedly pairs memories. They are drawn from oral history, uh, interviews with documents. So, for example, here, uh, he says, um, Newspaper, I uh, quote, newspaper items at the time, and quote, are used to check the dates and events. Okay. This was used to supplement the line above. The sauna is the one. So, so sometimes there's disagreement, there's conflict between the different sources. When they disagree. You must report both positions and explain why you prefer one account over another. Or perhaps you have to explain why you cannot decide. Triangulation is how you test claims. Next, um, you must um, use prior studies not as a cage. You, mean you should not be trapped by past studies, but instead you must use them as compass. This give you these previous studies, give you direct from. For example, Labajo states, uh, situates the renowned story beside uh, related work. Okay, Seki, for example, Seki wrote the paper, uh, Wherever the Waves Carry Us, the historical development of a Visayan fisher folks, various strategies. And this was used to show. Um, Patterns beyond a single island. So you can identify patterns even beyond using beyond the environment by referring to studies. <laughs> Citing regional studies, perhaps you ask, um, is this local pattern unique or is it part of a wider trend? Okay. 
Now, that comparison strengthens interpretation and points to follow-up questions. Um, the next rule is that you must you must state limits in very plain terms. Okay? You must be honest about what your study <clears throat> has shown and what it has not shown. So for example, at the end, Labajo says that um, the piece has, quote, provided the broad outlines of historical time perspective on the place. The present day parallel predicaments and population of Mughal fisher folk living as a basis of origin installation. So, he does not say, the author does not say that um, it was very comprehensive, it was detailed and analytical. What was sketched were um, broad outlines. And uh, that is an honest expression of the limitations of the study. And um, say exactly what you have produced. For example, you have just sketched something, then say that it's just a sketch. If you have presented a tightly argued case, say so. Or if um, your conclusions are only tentative hypotheses, then explicitly say so. Okay? That will not invalidate your findings. Then um, you show that you're honest okay, about the limits of your inferences. Admit, for example, that if you have likely biases, biases like when you have small samples only, perhaps memory lapses, perhaps there are records still missing, and present this up front, okay, up front. So readers can judge how far they trust the findings. And with um, the practical question, that the evidence raises. So for example, here, Labajo closes by asking, where can the Dahon Fisher Fork move next? Okay. And um, he further, uh, she further notes that many quote, cannot go home again. And therefore, the main vision of it. Good ethnic history links description to choice. Migration histories, livelihood shifts, conservation problems, also just policy or community responses. Ask what your history implies for people who live the story. Okay. So, take note of those steps where um, you present a clear question, a simple method statement, you named informants, you presented the local context, you gave, you included quotes that show the meaning of narratives, you triangulated with documents as well, the interviews, you engaged with prior work, especially the region. You present your on, on your limits honestly, and then you give a practical closure. This this steps a compact checklist for readable, responsible ethnic history. So you're left with your turn about like 